Alright, we are going to look at what is often called the box problem, which is to create a box from a piece of cardboard that is 12 inches by 8 inches by cutting squares out of the corners. Then we got some questions we're going to answer about that. What is the practical domain of the function? What is the maximum volume of the box? And what, can, what size cutout will give us a volume of 12 inches? So, first thing we should do is draw a picture of our piece of cardboard. Okay. And what we're going to be doing is making cutouts. So, a good idea is to label our variable. So let's call x, well, think about what the unknown is that drives everything. It's this cutout. So x is going to be the length of the cutout. Technically, it's going to be a length of one of the sides of the cutout. But um, that's enough. That's descriptive enough. So what's happening is we're cutting squares out of the corners, so we can fold the box up, so we can fold the sides up and make a box. So what we're doing is we're making a cut that is x by x here, x by x here, x by x here, and x by x here. Now when we fold this up, we're folding along these dotted lines here. And if you can see, we're going to have a box now. And it's the dimensions of this box in terms of x we need to figure out. Well, this long side originally was 12 inches. But notice that we're taking x and x away. So this side is now 12 minus the two x's. Over here, this was originally 8 inches. We're taking two x's away, so this side is 8 minus 2x. Now there's one more piece to the volume, and that's the height. Remember, this piece got folded up, so the height is just x. So the volume of this box, in terms of x, is our height times our length, which was 12 minus 2x, times our width, which was 8 minus 2x. Now the next thing that was asked for is a practical domain. Those are the values that make sense in the context of the problem. So, first off, we don't want x to be negative. How could we have a negative cutoff? Even a cutoff of 0 wouldn't give us a box, so the lower end of our domain has to be 0. You could use brackets for including, but that would give no box, it would just give the original piece of cardboard. Now let's think about what other values are going to be okay. If we look at our what we wrote down for our formula, it's going to kind of tell us. If we look at what happens, if we put in some values to here, well, for instance, this piece here becomes 0 if x is 4. If x is bigger than 4, then this part here would become negative. That's one of the sides of our boxes. So we can't have a negative side of the box. Now this part here becomes 0 when x is 6. In other words, we cut pretty much right in the middle. But like we said, that would give a negative side here, so we can't go as high as 6. So it turns out we don't want to go any higher than 4, because if we do, <coughs> we lose our box. At 4 exactly, we're cutting right in the middle, so again, we have no box. We'd be cutting out squares that we wouldn't be able to have anything to fold up. So we could make the argument that really we should be using parentheses if we want to make sure that we have a box. So there's our domain, or our practical domain. Now let's talk about finding the maximum value of the box. We're going to use our graphing calculator to help us out here. And what we're going to do is in our y equals I'm going to enter my function. I already happen to have it in. And as you can see it's in my y1. So I'm going to go ahead and graph it. And we can kind of see what's happening. It goes up, and that, remember what that is, the output is the volume. It kind of goes off the screen, the volume comes back down. Notice what happens. Right here, at 4, it hits 0. Then all of a sudden, we get a negative volume. 
Remember, we were saying we can't have a negative volume. So anything bigger than 4 doesn't make sense for our problem. So let's change our window so we can see this a little better. We know that our domain is just from 0 to 4. And we saw that our y max wasn't quite high enough. So let's try something. Let's try 25 and see if we see our whole graph now. I saw it go up, and there it is coming back down, but I still don't see the top. So we're going to need to make it quite a bit larger. There's a little bit of guessing and checking in here. Put in 60. Almost got it. So let's do one more. Let's make sure we get it this time. 80. Remember what this is. This models the volume as a function of the cutout. So our maximum volume is going to be at the top here. Now to do a maximum in the calculator, you do second, calculate. Number four there is maximum. Now it's going to ask for a left bound and a right bound. I have to move that cursor to the left side of this maximum, so over here. Now for my right bound, i got to go to the right side. Any place to the right, but I need my maximum to be between my left and my right bound. I ask the graphing calculator to find it. And my maximum volume is... So the max volume is 67.6 cubic inches. That should have been three there. Uh, it's when our cutout is 1.5, let's just go to two decimals for right now, 7 inches. Okay. Now we can go to our last question. What size cutout gives a volume of 12 inches? So what we're looking for is where our function is equal to 12. So we want to find an input given an output. Sorry about that. So we want to find when v equals 12. All right, well again, this is something we can do using the calculator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a line any place the output is 12. So I go to my y equals and I go to 12. And now when I graph, I actually have two places where the volume of the box would be 12 inches. So there's actually two answers. Now what we're calculating are intersection points. So I'm going to go second, calculate, intersect, number five. And it's going to do first curve and second curve. We just need the two curves. The one you go closer to is the one you'll get. So to get the larger one, we see that, we, the, that it happens at 3.65 inches. So x equals 3.65 inches. And we saw that there's another place where it happens. We're going to just do the same process over again. Second calculate intersect. Now we have to take our cursor all the way to the other side. I'm going to go on the other curve. It'll be a little quicker. We need to get closer to that intersection point than we are that intersection point. I know it's hard to see the cursor. It's moving along right here. I've got it really close and enter, enter, enter. And it's at 0.13 inches. So, that's how we can do that stuff in what's called the box problem.